Welcome back to another episode of the Million Dollar Body Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Nate, and today we're going to be talking about stress. Now, a lot of stress info you're going to see online is going to tell you all the same boring things. It's going to tell you to eat right, listen to some Enya, maybe do a little meditation. Um, I'm not going to go into any of that today because you probably already know it. So instead, we're going to be talking about a couple unconventional stress management tips. Now, as entrepreneurs, as business owners, most of the time, tax season doesn't necessarily bring about these fun, happy, butterflies in your stomach sensations where we're like very pumped to be here, just having a great time, just can't wait to do my W-2s and submit it all to my CPA. I'm just so pumped about it. Most of the time, this is a stressful time of year for us, okay? And if you're not a business owner or entrepreneur or um, tax season still does not necessarily bring about these happy feelings, but maybe it's something else going on in your life. Maybe you're having a conflict with someone at work. Maybe you're just in a weird place. Maybe you're planning a wedding. I don't know, whatever it is, but there are times in life when we get more stressed. Maybe you're in the middle of a video game and you're just losing at it. That, for me, very stressful. Maybe someone online has been calling you out and being really rude to you. Someone today told me that I look like a crackhead. So that caused me a little bit of stress because now I'm going to start having to eat more which is, which is hard, just hard to eat that much more chicken breast. I just don't like doing that. So wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, obviously stress is a part of life. I heard one, uh, Dr. Mayo Clinic had told me once that stress is like wallpaper. It's always around us, it's always always exists, but until it until it's overwhelming us, you know, it's looking like that, like, you know, you stepped into like someone's kitchen in 1972, we don't really notice it. So what can we do during stressful times to keep ourselves from getting too stressed? Because we know that obviously we don't want to get too stressed when you're like people, you're like, hey, how are you doing? And they're like, oh, I'm stressed. That's a negative thing, right? And then on top of that, there's actually a study that came out recently from Yale University. I don't know if you ever heard of that. It's supposedly pretty good, I guess. I've never been there. I wasn't allowed. But Yale University did a study talking about the, the stress hormone cortisol and what it does to our visceral belly fat. This study actually confirmed that even if you're a type of person who will store your body fat in a different place. So for some of us, we store our fat in our, like underneath our arms. For some of us, it's kind of on our love, like a, you know, love handles. Some of us, it's in our stomach. Some of us, it's on our thighs. Some of us, it's in our, our butt. No matter who you are or where you typically store your fat, this study from Yale said that having an increased level of cortisol due to stress will actually put more of that fat storage into your stomach region and actually reshape the way your body looks based on how you look naturally. So uh, this can be a negative, especially if once you realize that the more visceral belly fat you have, the more fat that you have underneath your skin and your muscle around your organs, the more cortisol you actually produce. So cortisol is produced as a in reaction to having more belly fat. And then the more cortisol you have, the more belly fat you get. So it becomes this cycle, right? You can see how that would definitely be a negative thing. We don't, we don't want more belly fat. We don't want more cortisol. Now, before I get too deep into this, cortisol is not a bad thing inherently. Too much of it is a bad thing. Just like Subway is not a bad thing to eat, go, you eat a Subway sandwich, but too much of it will make you uh, <clears throat> Jared. So that, we don't want that. We, that's, that's, that's very negative. So what we want to make sure we're, we know is that cortisol is a healthy hormone. Everyone has it. It's important to, be, to doing things like waking up. When you wake up, your cortisol spikes naturally, helps get you out of bed, and then it kind of peters off throughout the day. That's why we always suggest having cups of coffee about an hour after you wake up to make sure you ride that cortisol wave. Okay, so that's, an, that's important to, to notice. But what we're talking about here is, is too much. Too much stress, too much cortisol, too much belly fat. How do we avoid those things? Okay, so if you're... If you're in a busy season of your life, you're stressed out, you are you're just have something going on, it's kind of just like in the back of your head, you're like, oh, I got to do the W-2s, I'm fighting with this person, I want this person said something mean to me online, wherever you are, but it's something that's just kind of nagging, just like hold it like on the back of your mind, you can't really necessarily get rid of it, what do you do in those situations? I know I said I wouldn't talk about meditation, and I'm not going to, but meditation can be really helpful in just clearing, just kind of clearing your mind from distractions. And the one thing that I like about this is that if you start focusing when you're when you're in a like you're sitting on the ground somewhere comfortable whatever whatever it is for you, you start focusing on your breath right. You start thinking about breathing in through your nose, breathing out through your nose, breathing in through your nose, breathing out through your nose. One thing that's helpful for me, and I don't this is just because I have a giant nose, but when I'm inhaling, I try I feel the air kind of at the tip of my nose and it feels cold and that's kind of the sensation that I focus on as I go through the meditation. 
obviously every like three or four breaths, my mind's like, Pew! remember that thing that sucks? And you're like, yeah, that sucks. So here's the trick for me during those times. And you can use this not even when you're not meditating, but basically like uh, the visualization for me is I take, uh, like I take a piece of duct tape in my, in my brain, not real life. And I think I put the thought, whatever that thought was, taxes, wedding, anger, like fight with boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is, slap that on a, it's, for me, it's always a red balloon. I put that on the balloon and I would release the balloon mentally. And that's one thing that's been really helpful for me in terms of staying focused, staying in the moment, and then letting thoughts pass naturally, not being like, oh, I suck. I thought about a thing again. So, you know, whatever that is, if I'm hearing something, if I'm thinking about something, my mind is wandering, I just take that thought, put it on a red balloon, just release that. No problem. So that can be something that can be helpful for you, either when you, if you're meditating or if you're just standing around, like just kind of back and forth between tasks, having that thing obsessing, just take that thought, put it on a balloon and just release that. Let it go. Just let it go. So that's one thing that you can do to help, help kind of release stress. Obviously, exercise is huge. I don't need to tell you this. You're, you know that exercise is going to be helpful in releasing stress. Exercise is great for increasing your endorphins, making you feel better, calming your cortisol levels down, decreasing belly fat just because you're burning calories and burning fat. That's, those are awesome things. So I don't need to talk about how exercise is so great for you and it's so important. Um, one thing, though, one distinction, though, is um, generally, if you're really stressed out, if you've got a lot going on, if, unless you're the type of person who loves going to the gym and doing resistance training, that, could, that might not be the best fit for you. It might be better to do a yoga session, something stretching out, something calming, something where you focus on breathing, or cardio, because cardio can kind of have meditative properties. When you're doing cardio, you're taking some breaths in, you're releasing it, and you're just putting all your effort and intensity into doing one thing, whether that's running or jogging or rowing or cycling or whatever else. That becomes more of a, a mental exercise rather than just a physical exercise. So meet yourself where you're at. Don't be like, oh, it's bench press day. Got to go do bench press. I can't, even though this thing's driving me crazy, meet yourself where you're at. <clears throat> the, other, the other thing about that you can start doing or stop doing when you're stressed out is decrease your stimulant intake. And I know that's not that much fun coming from someone who has like 72 thousand milligrams of caffeine in his in his closet right now this is not like my ideal situation but oftentimes when we're stressed out we have a lot of cortisol we take that an extra scoop of pre-workout we're having two or more cups of coffee we're drinking that later into the day we're just stressed we kind of want that release there's two things going on number one we want to have more energy we want to be focused on this other thing over here number two we have we have this this reward reflex where we're like you know what's gonna make me happy coffee a red bull pre-workout whatever that is we start to think that like oh this is the thing that's going to help me out and yeah, you might feel a little bit better going faster, being doing more, having more whatever in the moment. But in reality, you're just borrowing that energy from future yourself. So if you're like, hey, I don't care about how future Nate feels. I'm gonna, he's gonna have a shit night of sleep. He's gonna wake up feeling terrible. But right now I gotta have that coffee. Then like, as long as you realize that's the score, it's because you're, you're not just giving yourself energy for free. You're just taking it from later. Okay, so just make sure you, you know that. And then cutting down on that caffeine intake can be really, really important in terms of letting yourself calm down. So if you don't have, if you're not having as much caffeine, if you're trying to eliminate a little bit of that, what can we do instead to increase our energy levels without increasing our stress? So I got a couple different options for you today. I'm gonna give you three different, different th things on what you can do to start increasing your energy right away without having to add a bunch of caffeine or stimulants on top of it, okay? So one really good option that you can do anywhere is just think, imagine if you had a jump rope in your hands and you started jumping rope, you don't need to have the jump rope to in order to do some call them toe pops. So just bouncing up and down in place. Now, this is good for a couple different reasons. Number one, you're moving, you're getting some blood moving. That's great. Number two, you're getting what's called lymphatic drainage. You're allowing yourself to like let the like inflammation, swelling, toxins, whatever else is going on, drain through your body's natural detoxification process called the lymph system. And that can be really helpful in decreasing your stress levels, putting yourself in a better state, and then also giving yourself energy. Having that just kind of bouncing up and down like that is gonna feel really good in terms of your, your brain, your body, your total body energy. So if you're like, if you're stressed before a meeting, if you don't have enough energy to go into um, a client proposal or a sales, a sales presentation, just try just 60 seconds popping up and down on your toes. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm doing it right now. <sighs> yes, that's a really good one. Okay, another one, another great thing to, you can do to start increasing your energy right now is a technique called qigong okay and what that involves it's very 
Very weird. I'm, if you're watching this on YouTube, great. If you're just listening to the podcast, just trust me when I say that it looks very strange. What we're going to do is we're stick our left arm out in front, totally straight. We're going to take our right hand, kind of cup it into a, a very small cup, and then we're just going to slap that hand up and down on our left arm. I'm not clapping. I'm just bringing this up and down on my arm. Then from there, we're going to go underneath the armpit, up the side, up onto the lat. Okay, and we're going to repeat that process on the other side. I'm still doing it. By the way, this does not look cool. You won't look really cool when you're doing this. Now on the other side. So do the arms, do the legs, do the, the glutes, which is really funny to do in public, and then do the low back. When you do that with your hands cupped just slightly, um, it creates a very hilarious noise. Don't try this in an airplane bathroom, by the way. Very important. Just a note for you. Um, but what also is going to go on there is we're getting, again, more blood flow, more circulation, more lymphatic drainage. You're going to be amazed how much different you feel after doing something just like this. Something small, something just, just inducing, movement inducing, something that's getting your blood moving a little bit more. And then also, there's a small, a small amount, especially if you're doing this in public, if you're feeling just a little bit embarrassed, you're going to feel a lot more energy afterwards. And I don't know why that is, but that's how it is. Just trust me on this. If you're doing something that's a little bit weird, a little bit out there, especially if you're like, eh, someone could probably see me and think, think some weird stuff about this, you're going to have a lot more energy. Just trust me on this or, you know, try it out yourself. See how you, see how you feel. The last thing, if you're like, man, I got I to gotta have something. I don't, I, I, you tell me I can't have caffeine. I still have green tea. You're like, sure, you can have green tea, whatever else. That's a little bit lower caffeine. But if you want a caffeine substitute, that's not going to make you jittery long term. Stay with me on this. Try some nicotine gum. Okay. Nicotine is a stimulant, surprisingly enough. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting you start doing chew or smoking or anything like that, but nicotine gum can actually give you just a little bit of a boost. Studies have shown that it increases your mental acuity. Your, um, your, your memory retention, and then your ability to think critically on your feet. It also increases some sort of, some physical capabilities as well, very slightly. So it's a really great stimulant in that way, but it also nicotine gum is not going to, not going to keep you awake longer. When you chew the gum, you kind of get the, you get the, the sensation, the results, when you spit it out, it's gone. So kind of weird on this one. If you want more information, I'll put, a, I'll put a link to an article I wrote in the comments talking about the difference. It is weird, um, but, uh, I think as a society, we generally demonize things based on how they sound rather than what the evidence shows us. So check it out. If you, ha if you have any more questions for me, I'm happy to answer. I think that's always a super, super odd topic to get into. But nicotine is nicotine gum. One of the biggest questions I get is, well, is it addictive? Surprisingly enough, since you're not absorbing it really directly into the bloodstream, you're absorbing it sublingually through the, like, the, um, everything, like the mucous membranes and stuff in your mouth. It doesn't have the addictive properties that you get through absorbing it through your, into your blood the same way dip does by kind of cutting into the lips. Uh, smoking does by absorbing it into your lungs and into the bloodstream from there. Or like the patch, which goes through your skin into the bloodstream. So since you're absorbing it sublingually through your mouth, it does not have the addictive properties. Again, try this out. Consult with the doctor. Talk to your mom. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to tell you how to live your life, especially now that it's 21 plus. So if you're 18 years or younger, you probably shouldn't listen to this podcast anyways. Um, but try that out. It, it, can be, it can be a game changer if you're willing to try something a little bit different, okay? So that's, in terms of managing your stress and still having a lot of energy, those are some good tips. A couple other things that, that are, can be powerful in terms of decreasing your cortisol levels overall is uh, there's a couple of just easy things you can do on a daily basis, okay? Number one is Increase your intake of vitamin C. So just like an emergency packet, I like to use my emergency packet in like a green, a green powdered juice at the same time. Uh, that way, if you, especially if it tastes like green powdered juice, it actually will taste a lot better with the emergency. Um, stress and high cortisol levels will also decrease your immune system. So the vitamin C is a nice bump up, okay? So the vitamin C can also, and also has some de-stressing effects. So try that out. Have some nice tea in the evening. So get, make yourself like have a little bit of a ritual of having like an herbal tea or a chamomile or something like that that's gonna help you calm down. And then once you start, once you start creating a ritual around that calming down, that can actually be your trigger. So if you, like even in the midday, you get stressed out, you can, start, you can go, okay, I'm gonna take 20 minutes right now, pour myself a cup of tea, sit down, take a couple deep breaths, and then go about my business. You'll be surprised how much more productive you can be after calming down and taking a second to take whatever is going on in your brain and letting it just shh. 
Another easy tip, and this is kind of funny because you've seen this in like Anger Management, the movie with um, Adam Sandler and um, Jack Nicholson, is just grabbing the earlobes a little bit. And it's so funny. You can actually grab your earlobes, just massage them slightly. And this is going to help. This, this will actually help you de-stress because you got some, uh, you got some reflex points in those earlobes that will help, help you calm down, de-stress, relax a little bit. And the other thing, the last thing I think is more of a mental game is just figuring out, am I in a hurry right now? And do I need to be? A lot of times we have deadlines to meet. We've got, you know, we, we have to get our taxes in, you know, as, you know, before March 15th as a business owner, April 15th as, a, as an individual. But get, making sure that you, like, if you are rushing, if you're like, I have to get here, I have to do this thing, I have to do this, I'm not just, make sure, like, are you actually in a rush right now? Do you need to be? <clears throat> or is there a way that you could actually take a breath? get out of that hurry mode and start kind of falling back into just doing what you do rather than trying to like grit yourself down, be like shaking like, like a 13 year old ADHD, like trying to figure it out. What can you do to calm down? One of my big uh, goals for this year was to get out of being in a rush all the time. I feel like I was always rushing, always busy, always in a hurry. <clears throat> and that doesn't, that doesn't serve me long-term, especially since most of what I do is not necessarily time sensitive. So, um, the hurries were all placed on me arbitrarily by myself, by putting these deadlines on myself, by waiting to the last minute, by procrastinating, by, by not leaving in time for places. So trying to get out of a hurry has been one of the big goals for myself this, uh, this, this year, 2020. So double check yourself. Are you in a hurry? Do you need to be? Where can you, where can you delegate? Where can you cut things entirely where can you get rid of get rid of the fluff and the noise that's going to allow you to focus on the main things that you need to get done without having to hurry or rush obviously sometimes we have to hurry or rush that's just life but where do we where are we arbitrarily putting those things on ourselves and where are we um actually needing to so just a couple of thoughts for you on stress relief because like i said <clears throat> stress plays a big role in where your body stores its fat and since I'm all about helping you delete, get rid of, eliminate, lose, drop, um, kill, shred, or burn belly fat. I think this is an important topic that we cover. Making sure that you know exactly how to work with your body's chemistry, not against it, and not, put, not try to always grit yourself, muscle your way out of stressful situations or things that arise in life. But obviously, stress happens. So making sure that we are able to deal with it appropriately is always going to be more beneficial than trying to just ignore it until it becomes a big issue. Once again, this is Coach Nate Palmer with uh, the Million Dollar Body Podcast, Nate Training Systems. If you want some more high quality information on how to eliminate, burn, delete, and release belly fat, make sure you're part of the Million Dollar Body Group on Facebook. That's, that's the, you can go to get there from the website n8trainingsystems.com slash group. We'll bring you there. Many thanks to our sponsor and employee of the month, Nate Palmer. He has just done a tremendous job in 2019. And I wanted to give him a lot of props on this podcast. All right, guys, hope you're having a great day. I'll talk to you very soon. Be blessed. Take it easy. Take a breath.